After two weeks at Half Blood Hill, the real world seemed like a fantasy. I found myself staring at every McDonald's, every kid in the back of his parents' car, every billboard and shopping mall. So far, so good, I told Annabeth. Ten miles and not a single monster. She gave me an irritated look. It's bad luck to talk about that way, seaweed brain. Remind me again, why do you hate me so much? I don't hate you. Could have fooled me. She folded her cap in visibility. Look, we're just not supposed to get along, okay? Our parents are rivals. Why? She sighed. How many reasons do you want? One time, my mom caught Poseidon and his girlfriend in Athena's garden temple, which is hugely disrespectful. Another time, Athena and Poseidon competed to be the patron god for the city of Athens. Your dad created some stupid saltwater spring for his gift. My mom created an olive tree. The people saw that her gift was better, so they named the city after her. Oh, they must really like olives. Oh, forget it. Now, if she'd invented pizza, that I could understand. I said forget it. In the front seat, Argus smiled. He didn't say anything, but one blue eye in the back of his neck winked at me. Traffic slowed down in Queens. By the time we got into Manhattan, it was sunset and starting to rain. Argus dropped us off at the Greyhound station on the Upper East Side, not far from my mom and Gabe's apartment. Taped to a mailbox with a soggy flyer with my picture on it. Have you seen this boy? I ripped it down before Annabeth or Grover could notice. Argus unloaded our bags, made sure we got to our bus tickets, then drove away. The eye on the, eye on the back of his hand opening to watch it as he pulled out of the parking lot. I thought about how close I was to my old apartment. On a normal day, my mom would be home from the candy store by now. Smelly Gabe was probably up there right now playing poker, not even missing her. Grover shuddered his backpack. He gazed down at the street in the direction I was looking. You want to know why she married him, Percy? I stared at him. What, were you reading my mind or something? Just your emotions, he said. Guess I forgot to tell you that satires can do that. You were thinking about your mom and your stepdad, right? I nodded, wondering what else Grover might have forgotten to tell me. Your mom married Gabe for you, Grover told me. You call him smelly, but you've got no idea. That guy has this aura. Yuck. I can smell him from here. I can smell traces of him on you, and you haven't even been here for a week. Thanks, I said. Where's the nearest showers? You should be grateful, Percy. Your stepfather smells so repulsively human, he can mask the presence of any demigod. As soon as I took a whiff inside his Camaro, I knew. Gabe has been covering your scent for years. If you hadn't lived with him every summer, you probably would have been found by a monster a long time ago. Your mom stayed with him to protect you. She's a smart lady. She must have loved you a lot to put up with that guy, if that makes you feel any better. It didn't, but I forced myself not to show it. I'll see her again, I thought. She isn't gone. I wondered if Grover could still read my emotions, mixed up as they were. I was glad he and Annabeth were with me, but I felt guilty that I hadn't been straight with them. I hadn't told them the real reason I'd said yes to this crazy quest. The truth was, I didn't care about retrieving Zeus's lightning bolt, or saving the world, or even helping my father out of trouble. The more I thought about it, I resented Poseidon for never visiting me, never helping my mom, never sending one lousy child support check. He'd only claim me because he needed the job done. All I cared about was my mom. Hades had taken her unfairly, and Hades was going to give her back. You will be betrayed by one who calls you friend, the oracle whispered in my mind. You will fail to save what matters most in the end. Shut up, I thought. The rain kept coming down. We got restless waiting for the bus and decided to play some hacky sack with one of Grover's apples. Annabeth was unbelievable. She could bounce the apple off her knee, her elbow, her shoulder, whatever. I wasn't too bad myself. The game ended when I tossed the apple up towards Grover and he got it too close to his mouth. In one mega goat bite, our hacky sack disappeared, core, stem and all. Grover blushed. He tried to apologize, but Annabeth and I were too busy cracking up. By the time the bus came, as we stood in line to board, Grover started looking around, sniffing the air like he'd smelt his favorite school cafeteria delicacy, enchiladas. What is it? I asked. I don't know. Maybe it's nothing. But I could tell it wasn't nothing. I started looking over my shoulder, too. I was relieved when we finally got on board and found seats together in the back of the bus. We, stole our, we stowed our backpacks. Annabeth kept slapping her Yankees cap nervously against her thigh. As the last of the passengers got on, Annabeth clamped her hand on my knee. Percy! An old lady had just boarded the bus. She wore a crumpled velvet dress, lace gloves, and a shapeless orange knit hat that shadowed her face, and she carried a big paisley purse. 
When she tilted her head up, her black eyes glittered, and my heart skipped a beat. It was Miss Dodds, older, more withered, but definitely the same evil face.